Hello everyone, I am Xerix, Lord Sentinel, and welcome back to Century of Economy. When we left off, each faction was just getting on their feet, and the first launches of the game had taken place. Now, on to the action! The Triton and Peak return to the home island, unloading food. The Amazon has set sail on the last known course, the Duc de Bourguignon. The Cour du Lyon is slightly slower than the Triton and Peak, and so is about a turn or two behind them. No great tragedy has befallen the Duke. She simply hasn't returned home yet. She has, however, found Voyanui Beach. The stacks of gold on the island are all face up, thanks to the maps of Alexandria. An explorer action reveals wet gunpowder, marines, a solid gold 100 coin, and a plethora of regular gold. The Duke also rolls to discover one of Voyanui's two resources, and finds metals. To the south, the Liblu has discovered the eastern portal, and has discovered a sunken treasure there, along with some silver coins. Back at home, the food is turned into gold, and La Dijon and Le Intrepide are launched, both with helmsmen. Most of the Spanish fleet has docked and a turn later has moved away. El Perfetta lost one of her silver coins to the Barrel of Monkeys, but still retains Jade. The Spanish make their first purchase of the game. El Aquamista and San Pedro are launched, each with a helmsman. The Americans are doing very well for themselves. The Carolina and Nenainui dock home cargoes of silver, giving the Americans even more gold. At the end of their turn, they launch the Dark Fox with the Navigator and James Madison. The English take a lackluster turn, but spend quite a bit of gold to launch three ships. HMS Benjamin, with Helmsman, RNS Morpheus, and Dawn Treader, with Helmsman. A wider shot of pirate operations. They have found two resource islands and at least two gold islands as well. They end their turn by launching the Asp and Cursed Blade. The Celestine approaches the rocky shore of an island. The Sea Monkey returns to Poseidon's Eye for the lumber that can be found there. The Coor is almost home with food. In the background, the Peak and Triton have returned to Tutorial Island and loaded more food. To the right, the Amazon is sailing past the shipwreck. As she comes around Voyanui, the Amazon is able to spot the Duc de Bourguignon. At the end of their turn, the French launch the Wasp, a clipper ship from Dark Tides. El Aquamista and some of the canoes load food from the shipwreck island. The other canoes load metals from Kanohi Island. Returning to the strange island, the San Pedro is just short of the dock, but suspects that there are more. Sailing south, the Principe de Asturias has discovered a gold island along the edge of the map. The Spanish spend all of their gold to launch the Santa Isabel at the end of their turn. The Americans continue to do well as gold piles up on their home island. The Frontier risks reef damage with the hoist spices from the Flattop Island. The Argo, Providence, and Silver Dollar sail east and discover a part of a landmass. Returning to the gold island, the Hyena loads the last coins from it. The Dawn Treader is not far behind and will spend some time looking for buried chests. Elsewhere, the Hound passes the Benjamin on her way back to the home island. The Honu Iki and Morpheus return to the hidden cove island. The Cursed Blade sets sail for Sharktooth Island. The gold island that the Bloody Jewel found is emptied of gold. A small pile of gold begins to grow on the pirate home island as the Longshanks returns. To the left, the Star of Siam is attempting to unload her cargo without the negative effect of rats. The Sea Monkey makes land at Poseidon's Eye once again, and loads lumber from the massive island. After much time at sea, the Alexander docks at the Cursed Home Island, unloading her cargo of silver and buried chests. The Cursed have found the Minerals Island that the pirates have been visiting. The Banshee's Cry is docked on the other side, and the two crews just miss one another. At this point, it was time for the first in-game resource change. The dice were rolled, with a 6 coming up for duration and a 3 for value. This makes spices and metals the most valuable resources at 6 and 5, respectively. A conference at sea as the Duc, Amazon, and Intrepide all meet at Voyanui. In a rare instance, the Peak, Triton, and Coor all dock at home and unload food. The Lee Blue makes a quick stop at the quest fort. Spending 5 gold, she takes on the sunken treasure quest, and immediately turns it in for a hefty 100 gold. Sailing into Voyanui Bay, the Amazon notes the strange whirlpool that the crew of the Duke described. At the end of their turn, the French launch, putting the triumph into the water with an explorer. 
they also buy a town and trading port upgrade. The canoes are split between the Shipwreck Island and Kanohi Island. The Alquimista has unloaded a cargo of food to the home island, while the Santa Isabel positions herself to take Jade from El Profeta. The Princeep explores the Gold Island in the south, finding a metal hull and a solid gold 100 coin. Once again spending everything they have, the Spanish launch the Buscador with the Helmsman. The Providence makes land, discovering the Archway Island. She explores and loads some of the gold and unique treasures that can be found there, and discovers lumber, taking a single one of the resource. On her port side, the silver dollar makes land. At the end of their turn, the Americans launch again, putting the Sea Wind, Harlequin with Chieftain, and Native Canoes into the water. The Sea Wind and Harlequin are launched at the home island. The canoes are placed on the far side of Flattop Island. The Hound docks at home, revealing a sparky silver two coin, which will be worth six gold. To her starboard stern, the Honuiki has returned. The hyena still has cargo space available and searches for buried chests. The Dawn Trader sails to the far side of the island to assist her. Another wide shot of pirate waters. Ships are returning from islands with golden resources. After loading a cargo of minerals, the Celestin makes for home, where the Alexander is waiting. Word of the Western Portal spread quickly through the Cursed Fleet, and the Fiddler's Green makes for the portal. She docks and loads most of the remaining silver and gold. On her way back to the home island, the Duc de Bourguignon makes contact with the Wasp. The crew of the Duc inform the Wasp of another island further west they spotted, but did not explore as their cargo hold is full. The Wasp sails on, and finds the island. The Curse of the Black Spot eliminates her helmsman, and Lodette's revenge will be an annoyance. However, a sparkly silver ford medicine will make it worth it. The Amazon makes land at Voyanui and explores one of the many stacks of coins that can be found there, uncovering the Emperor's Royal Command, the Heart of Stone, some silver, and lots of gold. She also explores the other half of the island, finding lumber. The Santa Isabel makes contact with the Princip de Asturias and prepares to transfer some cargo between the two ships. Once again, the Spanish spend all they have on a launch, putting the Alonso de Orozco with an oarsman into the water and buying a town upgrade. Sailing over a reef, the frontier takes serious damage, but is able to hoist a load of spices from Flattop. Three of the American canoes try to course east, into the unknown. The other two are sailing east, but on a different course, and have discovered the Skull Rock. They launch four ships at the end of their turn. Mississippi, Sea Strider with Helmsman, Freedom's Banner with Helmsman, and Swift Victory with Helmsman. The English have sailed into unknown waters for them. The Benjamin and Dawn Treader have made land at the large pyramid island and loaded the lumber that can be found there. The pirates have found a workaround for the rats on the Star of Siam. She will transfer her gold coins to the dragon to keep her chests, since they are not coins or unique treasures. Sailing west, the Bloody Jewel spots what seems like a large landmass in the distance. At the end of their turn, the pirates launch the Bonnie Liz in Crescent Rose. The Cursed have built up a decent amount of gold, but have spent very little of it. A wide shot of Cursed Waters. The Monkey is still docked at Poseidon's Eye, the Fiddler's Green is returning home, and the Alexander is making for the gold under the bottom of the frame. At the end of their turn, the Cursed launch putting three ships into the water from return of Davy Jones, Nat, Urchin, and Leech. A wider shot of French waters. The Duc de Bourguignon is almost home, as is the Dijon, which sailed north to the Gold Island. To the left, the Triumph makes sail for Tutorial Island, town and port upgrades stored in her hull. The Amazon is on her way out of the bay, and the Intrepid has made land at the beach. Cargo has moved from the Princeep to the Isabel. The Alonzo is on her way to the Princeep as well, ready to take on the chieftain she carries. Gold begins to pile up on the Spanish home island. El Profeta and one of the canoes have been docked there for some time, as the Spanish are unsure how to process the UTs they carry. Sailing east, the American canoes in swift victory have discovered an island. A wide shot of the American home island. The island has gotten crowded, with piles of gold and several ships docked to the island. Back in the east, 
two of the American canoes spot a strange whirlpool. And the Amazon! A squadron led by the sea wind sails directly south, past the gold island and finds a strange dock, leading to something massive. The crew of the sea wind are curious and in awe, as their ship is quite literally in the shadow of this massive thing. Back at home, the Frontier uses her hoist to take the smuggled goods and silver three from the Providence, and then unloads them at the home island. The three doubles to six, which is then doubled to twelve by the smuggled goods. As has become their norm, the Americans launch at the end of their turn, putting four ships into the water. Cheyenne, with Captain, Helmsman, and Oarsman. Sea Tiger, Chesapeake, and Lynx. The Pirate Home Island. The Star of Siam has transferred almost all of her cargo to the Dragon. In the upper left, the Crescent Rose sets a course to the west. Two chests and some silver are unloaded at the home island. To the west, the Bloody Jewel has found a gold island. The Crescent Rose and Banshee's Cry are close behind, but are likely to sail on ahead. The Cursed divide their fleet. Two ships sail to Poseidon's Eye, and two to Pyramid Island. To the left, the Alexander has loaded all the remaining gold from the Gold Island. At the end of their turn, the Cursed launched the Guishan, with linked headhunter and a helmsman. And that wraps up this report. The factions continue to grow as the unexplored regions of the map continue to shrink. If you want to see what happens next, make sure you're subscribed. If you liked what you saw, hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.